So I have photos of me at probably six years of age canoeing for the first time. I didn't really get into it though until I was in the Scouts, about 11 or 12 years old. And I started paddling in order to get my Duke of Edinburgh award. So I did all of my first expeditions in a kayak. And uh, through scouting, I acquired all the skills that you need to do a reasonable whitewater uh, expedition. And I still use all those skills even now. You know, some of my, my biggest and most treasured expeditions have been in a kayak and making the first descent of whitewater rivers in the Himalayas and, and in Papua. Um, and, you know, being able to do big kayak open crosses and circumnavigations in the sea kayak. It's something that has taken me to some of the world's wildest places and something I hope to be doing until I'm in my 90s. So I would say on um, the Upper Thames in Oxfordshire, if you go out on a stand-up paddleboard or a canoe, then you're going to see red kites circling overhead. Uh, at this time of year, there's an extraordinary amount of invertebrate life because you've got all of the aquatic invertebrates, damsel flies, uh, dragonflies, mayflies, caddisflies are all emerging from the river. And because of that, you've got lots of predators that are feeding on them. So the swifts, the swallows, the martins, if you're lucky, hobbies and, uh, and common terns. It, it, it is an absolute feast of wildlife and it's right in the tamest part of, of southern England. That's, that's a fantastic question. I genuinely think, as someone who uh, you know is a conservationist and loves wildlife first and foremost, that uh, canoes and stand-up paddleboards are the best way to watch wildlife bar none. Um, you'll notice when you're on the water that uh, most water birds are much more accepting of you in a, in a boat like this than they would be in any motorised boat and much more accepting than they would be if you were on land and you were on foot. It, it's, it's their environment as long as you're, you're moving relatively quietly and easily and uh, you're not making too much noise, they can be very, very accepting of you. If you see any signs whatsoever of stress, if you see a, a bird that is, that is trying to get away from you, then just hold your ground, maybe just gently move away. Don't push in too close, there's, there's no need to. Um, I would say, um, you know, in most paddle boats, wash is not a massive concern, and it's a big concern in, in, in motorised boats, particularly this time of year, because you have so many nesting birds that are down close to the water's edge, things like grebes and coots and moorhens, and uh, wash can be really damaging to nests. But it's not generally a problem for us in, in paddle sport. So I'd say just use your common sense, watch the, uh, the signs and the bad body language from the animals you're observing, and it is the best way to see wildlife. I would choose Aldo Kane, who's been uh, my constant companion on my last few expeditions, uh, effortlessly capable, and um, also he, I, I would be able to throw him out of the boat if it started sinking because um, because I'm definitely much much stronger than he is. So I would I would overwhelm him in a fight, and he definitely won't complain with me saying that. <laughs> Al Aldo's the guy who's always willing to sacrifice more than anyone else to take the worst sleeping spot, to eat the worst food, so that everyone else in the team uh, kind of can do okay. And he is just the best person ever to have on an expedition. Uh, then, if I was to allow allowed to have someone from history. It would be my great hero, Alfred Russell Wallace, who was a, uh, a naturalist who was active around about the same time as Charles Darwin, um, sent back some incredible reports of life in the Amazon and in, uh, in Southeast Asia, which were a huge part of my desire to go to those places and explore them for myself. Um, and yeah, I, I think he would be very, very high on the list. And then, I'm not allowed Helen, really? Not allowed Helen. That's, that's, that's so unfair. Who am I going to choose then? Well, I guess, I guess I'd choose my mum because uh, my mum uh, would just take care of us all. It would make, make sure that we, we were all comfortable and uh, she was a very, a very calming influence, my mum, so it would be her. So uh, after doing the DW with Helen, we got talking and we started thinking about other paddling races that we could do. And obviously there's the doozy in, in South Africa, which we would love to do, 
but because it's got quite a lot of white water in a um, in a tippy boat, we'd need to do a lot of training for that. Um, it is though definitely on our wish list. Uh, the Yukon Thousand is the biggie. That's that's the monster race, and we would we would love to go back and do that. Um, and I think Alaska is probably my favourite place in the whole world to kayak. So to go to Alaska and paddle with Helen is is something I would I would love to do and hopefully it's something I'll get a chance to do next month when we head out to Alaska.